Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host for episode 88. Thank you very much for taking the time to tune in as we're all still hunkered down by what's going on around the world. I do want to extend my best wishes for everybody out there, all my viewing audience, your friends and families as well, hopefully everybody staying safe and you're following and adhering to what officials are asking you to do. Let me get right into it. I talked in the last show about some uh, OEMs that are getting into helping with the COVID-19 outbreak of the pandemic in supplying things like masks and face shields and ventilators, and all that stuff. And of course, Tesla is has jumped into the fold as well. Of course, they donated uh, hundreds of ventilators to New York City about a week or so ago, a couple of weeks ago, and to the state. Uh, and those were desperately needed because ventilators are, are something that are, are in short supply in many cases, many areas, including the United States. Now those ventilators that they delivered were FDA approved ventilators and they, they're gonna ship they're gonna get more and they're gonna ship them to hospitals world worldwide. So good for Tesla to jump in and uh, join the cause. Now not only are is Tesla shipping ventilators that they bought from China, but they're also looking to produce some of their own. And these uh, they have got a prototype that they unveiled, uh, which is using a lot of parts from the Model Three, <laughs> a lot of automotive parts, things you'll recognize, touch screens, infotainment computers, ECUs from the Model Three, and so forth. So again, I'm glad that Tesla stepping up beyond just purchasing and supplying some, but actually wanting to get into building uh, some of their own as well to uh, ship out and help. So thank you, Elon and Tesla, for that. And before I get into more automotive news, uh, GM, of course, has stepped up in the same token. Um, they are making face masks for frontline workers um, out of their Warren, Michigan facility. Uh, it's up and running in about a week uh, from this show, so it could be up and running by now. Uh, and they're going to ramp up to produce 50,000 masks, face masks a day, with the potential to ramp that up even further to 100,000 per day or 1.5 million per month. Uh, and they're also partnered with... Um, Ventec Life Systems to mass produce critical care ventilators as well. More ventilators here um, out of a uh, Como, Indiana facility that start shipping now in April. Um, and the, they're ramping up manufacturing capacity of more than 10,000 per month. So again, it's just nice to see all the OEM manufacturers answer the call and step up and help out. Now I got criticized on the last show for, <laughs> for I guess some people still think that I bash Tesla. I don't know, man. I love these guys, so I don't know why. But whatever, if you get that sense, I'm sorry to feel that way. So I got a little bit more Tesla news. Uh, they did have a very strong quarter. The first three months of 2020 was one of their highest quarters ever, uh, producing over almost 103,000 vehicles for the quarter, certainly lower than their 500K per year target that they're trying to. And this year, you know, it's going to be tough for anybody to kind of hit their targets for sure. And that's understandable. Uh, more than, of course, the bulk of those were Model 3s. Uh, no, no surprise, but with some Model Ys hitting the scene now. And of course, uh, still about 15,000 or so S's and X's between those uh, two for the quarter. Um, and also that's now taking into account some of the Shanghai uh, factory uh, pr production levels. Um, they've achieved some record levels of production already, to, despite, of course, significant setbacks with the closures that China was faced earlier on. So they're now up and running. So we expect uh, the second quarter or the next quarter numbers for Tesla to be decent. But again, uh, it's going to be subject to the uptake of the economy. And uh, now with a lot of downturn, uh, the economies are struggling. The purchasing and buying power of people are going to be somewhat diminished, if not a lot diminished. So it's going to be interesting to see if big purchases like cars, uh, you know, will continue to grow from a Tesla perspective. I think all manufacturers are going to suffer a hit, including Tesla, but we'll wait and see. And because you can't get enough Tesla news, I got one more little nibbit for you, uh, nugget for you. The one millionth Tesla has been manufactured but not yet delivered. Uh, it could have been delivered by now. It's going to be delivered sometime this quarter, according to uh, to Tesla. But uh, great to see that uh, one millionth Tesla is on the horizon. Switching gears to Audi, um, they have announced that they've got four battery electric vehicle platforms that they're spooling up, one that they've already got, of course, uh, and then they're going to use these platforms for a total of over 20 all-electric vehicles in the, uh, in the market 
to launch by 2025. We'll have to again wait and see on these dates because of what's happening. Everything could be thrown for a canter there. And now on the MLB Evo platform, that is basically it's already being used for the e-tron for the Audi uh, Audi e-tron. The SUV model has, of course, the two battery powertrain versions. Um, so that's already in use and we see that up and running uh, specs like 95 kilowatt batteries uh, our batteries um, the uh, 50 quattro that's coming out is uh, 71 kilowatt hours uh, dual single uh, dual motor all wheel drives um, peak outputs of 300 kilowatts dc fast charging up to 150 and so forth so that's on that platform a nice platform and they will continue to do cross crossover sport backs suvs on that platform now the j1 performance platform is uh based uh, is what they through uh, under underpinning the uh, GT concept, the e-tron e GT concept, which is scheduled for late 2020. Again, folks, these dates probably will move. Um, but key features, uh, it's the higher voltage battery system being 800 volts. Uh, so it'll support fast charging up to 350 kilowatts. Uh, these are high performance and we should see these in, um, in, in you know, maybe an r8 version or something like that electrified that would be awesome to see uh because that's a beautiful car so see more of those higher performance unfortunately higher pricing but I'm glad that they're continuing to do it now of course the meb is the staple is the stable product within the volkswagen group a family and uh it is uh, being used for everything it's more for their small to medium-sized cars and uh vehicles um and uh, audi is already uh, using it uh, intending to use it for that class of car uh, of uh, car there's the q4 e-tron concept which they're going to bake into that one as well now the premium platform electric or the ppe is the last platform and it's basically a joint uh, designed and engineered and built platform uh, by uh, audi and porsche uh, and of course that's going to mean it's going to cost some money but it's going to be for medium and larger premium vehicles um, possibly like uh, the a4 through the a8 and q5 uh, q8 families and uh, maybe even uh, through the uh, probably the uh, all-electric porsche uh, porsche macan that'll be coming up as well 800 v uh, battery architecture again with up to 350 kilowatt fast fast charging so good to see that uh, that audi is has these platforms in-house um, as they have articulated they want to go further and deeper into electrification so this is more proof that uh, they're getting there got some info from polestar on their concept called the precept which they've announced showcasing three pillars of this uh, brand their sustainability their digital technology and design again remember folks concepts typically aren't cars that we actually see vehicles that we actually see hit the streets in some cases now the trend seems to be the concepts are more likely uh, they look and feel more that uh, more likely that we'll see it on the street maybe anywhere from 80 to 90 percent that that look will be there and a lot of those design elements will carry through to the actual production version however it's no guarantee so uh, with this car with this vehicle it's basically talking about polestar sustainability which you know looks at how they're high tech the sustainable materials all that kind of stuff are are being used for their vehicles moving uh, now and moving for, further the digital technology as they continue to evolve the android power infotainment system which we've seen in the polestar 2 which is part of that a larger interfaces and and more features um, and uh, uh, things that you'll be able to do and that they'll incorporate into their vehicles and from a design they really want to focus on aerodynamic efficiencies and we know from all electric that efficiency especially aerodynamics plays a very important part in extending battery range and getting the most that you can out of your battery pack for range so they're going to focus on that and um, continue to to look at some of the elements in this vehicle it's a gorgeous looking vehicle so i hope to see a lot of what we see here that actually does make it to production so wait and see now byton with their uh, m byte product uh, saw some good news just the other day that now it, again it proves that the, the chinese market is slowly coming back to almost full operations in a lot of ways because they've actually started production now in the chinese plant uh, they reopened the doors and the crossover m byte has uh, production has officially begun um, it's at uh, the Nanjing Manufacturing Facility in China. 
It's a state-of-the-art 860,000 square foot facility that'll be building the Byton M Byte. They've already got some cars off the line. You see some of the pictures here. Remember that vehicle is going to have two powertrain options, single rear uh, drive motor and all wheel drive, uh, 270 to 400 horsepower variants, 300 miles, 483 kilometer ranges um, on the uh, first vehicle with a little bit less, uh, 265 miles and 426 on the higher spec vehicle. Um, the thing about this is that uh, when they announced this to actually when the rubber hits the road when they're actually starting to build the vehicles on production lines and they're coming off the off the lines that's been about two years for these guys so that's pretty fast from an automotive landscape perspective when you start with something and you actually get it out the door within two years with all the the dollar investments and everything that needs to be done it just shows um, you know that the Chinese engineering and the Chinese manufacturing powerhouse well, what they really can do when they put their mind to it that it shows on this so it's good to see uh, I don't have any other details but if you do have one on order because they have been taking pre-orders for a while and you've got some information as far as ETAs and what's going on I'd love to hear from you please send me an email or let me know in the comments and my final story today is something that's a little sometimes I try to find things that are off the beaten path, of course. And here's a electric powerboat by Rand Leisure. It's a 28 foot electric powerboat, as you can see by these pictures. Um, really, really cool. Now, Rand is based in Copenhagen, so they built these all electric boats. Um, it's a full electric propulsion system that gives the boat a top speed of about 40 knots, which is pretty fast if you're into, fl into flying on the water. 40 knots is a good clip, I'll tell you that. Uh, maximum cruising range of 140 nautical miles, which is really, really good for a boat this size. Um, there's not a whole lo a lot of other specs, but you can go check them out on their website. Uh, other than that, these aren't going to be cheap. These are starting at around 174000 I believe it's USD. This article didn't say it, but it's a US article, so that's what I'll go with. So that's a pretty pricey uh, uh, a lot of bag of caches to, uh, to afford for this boat. But again, it's just great to see that, that this is happening on all kinds of different aspects where electrification makes great, great sense. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, some of the latest uh, stories that I've been following. Thank you very much for watching, of course. If you like what you see, please uh, feel free to like it and subscribe if you have not. It's free to subscribe. does not cost you anything. would very much appreciate it if you do. Uh, thank you for leaving comments. I always enjoy reading all the comments and try to respond to each and every one. Again, humbled uh, thanks to my Patreon supporters. You know who you are. All the names, by the way, for Patreon come up in the closing credits at the end so if you're looking to see your name stay tuned they're all there and i do run those every single show because i'm very appreciative for patreon if you're not sure what it is check out the website as hopefully i can get back out and do some more <laughs> reviews i had things I had, I had stuff lined up folks i really did and then now everything is put on a hold for the next few months until probably the summer at least maybe even into the early fall we'll have to wait and see so you're stuck with me doing some news shows from time to time and of course i did the live broadcast or the q a stream uh, if you missed it and you can see it on my youtube channel of course and if you'd like me to do another one let me know in the comments I, i'd like to get the feedback uh, it seemed to be a good turnout uh, i can certainly schedule another one uh, since we're still in lockdown mode for most places and i'd love to do a q a and uh, and answer questions and, and comments whatever come in so i appreciate that now, I hope that I've helped educate minds one tailpipe at a time. Again, thank you very much for watching. Please, everybody, stay safe. It is important to continue to follow safety recommendations. And as YouTube says, you know, uh, stay home because it does save lives. If you don't have to go out, then please don't. If you do, take precautions, and we will get through this, folks. So again, until the next episode, please, everybody stay safe, and I will see you when I see you. Take care, and bye-bye.